Well, good morning. Do you remember what we celebrated last Sunday? Yes, last Sunday was Father's Day, wasn't it? Did you give your father a card? Maybe a card that you made. Were you really nice to your father so he had a special day? I hope so. My grandchildren in Indiana sent me this card. It says, Happy Father's Day, Grandpa. And inside, they wrote little notes telling me how much they cared about me. It was really nice. Well, today, in today's lesson, we're going to talk about a father and how much he loved his son. But before we do that, I'd like to pray. So bow your heads and let's begin. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the lesson today. We thank you for allowing us to be all together as we listen to the lesson. Bless our listening. Help us to remember the lessons that you would have us remember. We ask all of these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Well, the lesson today is another parable that was told by Jesus. And remember, we talked about parables the last couple of weeks, and we said that a parable is simply an earthly story that Jesus told, but it had a deeper, a heavenly meaning. And Jesus told these parables to make a point, but he made it so that it wasn't really that clear. He didn't come right out and say it. He told it in a parable instead. And the parable that we're going to talk about today is commonly known as the prodigal son. Now the word prodigal isn't a word that we use much today, but it simply means a person that lives very extravagantly and very wastefully. So I think we could rename this the wasteful son. This parable is told or recorded in the book of Luke. And in it, Jesus begins his parable by telling us that there was his father, and the father had two sons. When these sons grew up, the younger son asked his father to split up his estate and give him his portion. Now this was unusual because an estate usually isn't divided up and given to the sons until the father dies. But in this particular case, the son asked him to give it to him early. Now an estate consists of everything that was left over when the father died. All of his possessions, any land that he had, and also all of his money. So Jesus continues and says, The father did what the younger son requested. He split up everything, and he gave the younger son the amount that would belong to him. Well, not long afterward, the son left. The son took everything that he had been given, and he left and he moved away to a faraway country. And in that country, he started spending his money and he spent it wastefully. He spent it lavish on lavish living and he spent it sinfully. Well, as you might expect, it didn't take long for all of that money to be spent. And this poor younger son, he had to look for a job. But at this particular time, there was a famine in the land and there weren't many jobs available. In fact, the only job that he could find was one feeding pigs. Can you imagine that? But the younger son really didn't have a choice. So he had to accept this job of feeding the pigs. And Jesus said that when he looked at the food that he was feeding the pigs, he was wishing that he could have food that was as good. He was really in bad shape. In fact, the younger son He'd hit rock bottom, and he finally came to his senses. He thought about his father and about how his father treated the higher workers that he had on his land. While well, they had plenty of food to eat, so he devised a plan to go back to his father and beg to become a hired person or a hired man working for his father. This is what he planned to say. Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. 
So can you see that this younger son was really sorry for the type of life that he had led, for squandering all of this money that he had on riotous living? You know, when you feel sorry for your sins, that's the first step in repentance, isn't it? We talked about that last week. Well, the son started out for home. And I can imagine how he might have been feeling. He might have really been uncertain as to how his father was going to receive him when he got home, especially when he found out that he'd wasted all of his money. So he was probably heading home with a lot of thoughts on his mind about this. But the Bible tells us, as Jesus continues the parable, that the father was watching. And when the father saw this younger son afar off, he had compassion on him. In other words, he felt sorry for him. Not only that, but the father ran out to meet his son. And when he did, he put his arms around him and he kissed him. Probably not the type of reception the younger son was expecting. And then the younger son confessed his sin to his father. This is what he said. Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. He therefore confessed his sin. And like we talked about last week, confessing a sin is a second step in repentance. So when they got home, it might surprise you how the father reacted to his younger son. Jesus says that he called one of his servants, and this is what he said to the servant. He said, quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And the servant complied, and they began to celebrate that the last lost son had returned. Well, the parable could end there, couldn't it? And it would be a very good parable about the love of this father for his wayward son. But it doesn't end there. Jesus continued by telling us, about the reaction of the older son. You see, the older son was jealous. He was jealous that the father was treating the younger son the way he was treating him and having a feast and celebrating his return. In fact, he wouldn't come into the feast. He wouldn't celebrate with his brother and with his father. And the father, not seeing his older son, went out to find him. And when he found his son, he asked him why he wasn't coming in to celebrate. And the older son, he accused his father of not treating him like he should, of treating the younger son better than he treated him. He basically said, I've been faithful to you all of these years when this younger son ran away and spent all of this money wastefully. Yet when he returns, you supply a big feast for him. You never did that for me or my friends. And that's where the parable ends. We don't know whether the older brother went in or whether he didn't. That's where Jesus ends this particular parable. So let's talk about what this parable might have meant. Who do you think this father in this parable was? Or who it represented? Who do you think the younger son might have represented? And finally, who do you think the older brother might have represented in this parable. Well, I think that the Father was no one else other than God the Father. God the Father who loves his children and is ready to forgive them. I think that the younger son in this particular parable were those people that had gone astray, those people that had sinned but realized it and sought forgiveness and were received back by God the Father. And finally, what about the older brother? Who did he represent? Well, I think he might have represented the Pharisees, those people that continued to think themselves better than others and who rejected Jesus and all of his teachings. So I think that's what this particular parable was all about. So finally, what can we learn? What lessons can we learn from this particular parable that might be applied to us? Well, the first thing 
I think that we can be reassured that God loves us, that God loves sinners, and that he loves us more than we can ever understand. There's never any kind of a sin that we, can, that we commit that God won't forgive, because God is a loving God. And we, we are the sinners. We're those lost people, of course, that sin daily and need forgiveness, like the younger son. But we come to our senses, don't we? And that's when we repent of our sins, so that we can have that forgiveness from our Heavenly Father. Secondly, I think we can learn that we shouldn't look down on other people or think that we're better than those other people and more deserving of God's love, because that simply isn't true. We shouldn't be like those Pharisees that thought themselves better and yet rejected Jesus and the forgiveness that he offered. So finally, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about why the Father loves us so much that he forgives us. Why do you think it is? Why do you think the Father loves us so much and forgives us of our sins? Well, the answer is pretty simple. The answer is that Jesus suffered and died for those sins on the cross. Yes, the Father loved us so much that he sent his only Son to earth to suffer and die for our sins so that our sins could be forgiven and so that a relationship with God could re be restored as our sins were forgiven. So that's the basic thing that I think we need to take out of this lesson and remember all of our lives. No sin is too big for God to forgive, but it's all only because Jesus suffered and died for our sins. So I think in our closing prayer, it might be appropriate to thank Jesus for suffering and dying for our sins, and also for God truly loving us. So let's close this lesson with a prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together with these children. We thank you for this particular parable that shows the Father's love, that Father's love for us, his children. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for suffering and dying for our sins on the cross, so that we might have that hope and promise of eternal life, along with the forgiveness of sins. And we thank you, God the Father, for loving us enough to send Jesus to die for our sins, and for accepting his atonement on the cross for our sins, and for forgiving us and loving us. We pray that you would bless and keep us in your care, especially be with each of these children and bless them during the week ahead. We ask these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. All right, that's the lesson for today. Thank you for listening. We will hope to see you all again next Sunday. Okay?